Welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. That's Nell, I'm Scott, and today, what are we doing now? We're doing eight books with unlikable protagonists. And this isn't, no, what's his face from that book that I hated, and I hated the book because of him. Catcher in the Rye. Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> it's, this isn't... it's good to see you bagging somebody that isn't Charles Dickens. <laughs> this isn't no Holden Caulfield moment. This is unlikable protagonist or narrator um, and you liked the book anyway. So we've got eight. You maybe even liked the unlikable character. Or in the end, or in the middle, or yeah. but you knew it was sick. Yeah, <laughs> you knew it was wrong. You're like, I'm on the devil's <laughs> side here. I really feel like I've got some ethical problems. <laughs> It's not my fault they're so charismatic. Um, so, eight books with unlikable protagonists. The first one is a Scott favourite. Is it The Wasp Factory? It is. Is that the first on the it list? Is. I love The Wasp Factory. The Wasp Factory is the story of a 17 year old serial killer. Right? <laughs> Um, and Scott's into it. I'm, I'm down with this. It's such a good book. It's. Um, it's layered, it's clever, it's creepy, it's unpredictable, um, it's bizarre, and he is insane. Yeah. Um, he goes around and... And not in a fun bipolar kind of way, like in a mass murder -y... He collects his own urine and like, he calls some skin samples, which I think is his dandruff, and he goes around and he hunts wasps and dead rats. And he puts him in this weird machine where he releases the wasp and he has this turn and and, all, and it predicts the future as far as he's concerned and he's clearly not well in the head. <laughs> um, which is probably a really unsensitive, insensitive way of saying that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know whether you're supposed to like him or not. I'm only part way through the wasp factory because it just, I can't... I can't quite get over the hill, but um, I, I'm not sure if he's supposed to like him or not. Um, he murders people now. <laughs> but sometimes you're supposed to like the murderer. Sometimes. Um, in a very similar vein, I think the protagonist, protagonist in And the Arse Saw An Angel um, by Nick Cave is similarly twisted, but not... It's not quite the same book. It's not quite like it's it's not the same book. Is what I'm saying. Um, they are they both have the same feel. Um, but I, I think that's the same. I don't I don't necessarily think you're supposed to like the um, main character in an us or an angel. But I was rooting for him the whole way. So Nick Cave is this the bad seas Nick Cave? Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's why I read it. So if you're not bleak and from the 90s, then you might not know. <laughs> the Bad Seeds was an Australian band that had quite a few people in it whose names escaped me off the top of my head. But, but Nick Cave was, Nick was, the, the, Bad Seeds. was the, yeah, the front man. He um, was the John Lennon of the band. That's controversial. Yeah, anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and he's got quite a few musical projects in Cave. He's, he does solo work and all that sort of stuff. I'm, I think he's pretty big. I don't. I, think I'm sure people know who Nick Cave is. is. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he's limited to Australian fame either, just because he's an Aussie. I'm sure he's uh, easily Googleable. Uh, and, and tell me if you've never heard of him, and if I've just introduced you to a new ear joy. Um, it's not surprising that he's an author, though, is it? No, he's definitely a words man, and. Um, it's not surprising you've written something gritty. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, um, if you know Nick Cave's music, uh, whatever you're thinking his novel might be like, then it's that. My favourite Nick Cave song is Dig Lazarus Dig. It's the story oh, of it's a good one. That's that quite a new Lazarus one. coming back as a zombie. Lazarus from the Bible, the guy Jesus resurrected, comes back as a zombie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in a song. That, um, that whole album was quite awesome, actually. Which should give you an idea of the sort of books. <laughs> Yeah. You were probably right. Anyway, what's next on our list? Um, Vanity Fair, which I think is an easy gimme. Uh, yeah, look. Uh, it's, You're not supposed to like her. It's the author without, sorry, the, the book without a hero, according to me, Peace, is that Thackeray. A novel without a hero. Or uh -huh, so it was always the intention. It's always the intention. Becky Sharp is... Um, is 
not it, likeable. It's still quite easy to root for Becky Sharp, but... Yeah, but you don't like her. You don't want to be her mate. Uh, I think that's the whole point. I think as a man I'm supposed to want to be her mate. <laughs> I think that's the whole Boys point. Gross. <laughs> gross. I think she's going to use me and I'm supposed to enjoy that. That's the <laughs> whole point of the novel. Um, we've still got our books out from the the March wrap up, but that's quite fortuitous because um, we think that Theo Decker from The Goldfinch is it fits into this car car category nicely. He's um, he's a bit shit. <laughs> One of the things I really like about Donna Tartt's writing is that. I think a lot of authors make the good guys so good and the bad guys so bad. And everyone in here is grey. Yeah, Donna Tartt's just, she makes a character and... It's a person. It's a yeah. person, yeah. Um, I think Theo Decker it would be totally a disappointment to his parents. And, and I think that reading about him being a disappointment to his parents is very uncomfortable. Certainly to his mum. Yeah. Um, but, it's, but it is, it's really uncomfortable and I, and I think that some people get stuck in that and definitely the people who DNF this book it's very common for it to be sort of seems to be common in to be in sort of a certain period in Theo Decker's life where you stop thinking of him as a victim of a shitty childhood and start thinking of him as an adult who can't get his shit together when he goes back to New York yeah, when he goes, that seems to be the point where people DNF it and they just give up on him. They give up on him. Don't give up on him because the book is beautiful and it's worth it. Yeah, who cares what happens to Theo? Uh, yeah, and, and don't give up on him. Don't give up on him. He's an orphan for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give up on Oliver Twist? No. Anyway. Theo Decker never asked for more. He only asked for a painting. <sighs> okay. Uh, the next one's all yours, baby. A confederacy of dancers. You're not most supposed to like Ignatius at all. I, I, you're supposed to be ridiculing him. He's rude. He's bombastic. He's an idiot. He thinks everybody else around him is an idiot. He may be right on that last most point. <laughs> um, he sells hot dogs and his best customer is himself. Um, he is Homer Simpson. Starts off by assaulting a policeman. That's the first thing you see. Um, he carries around a cutlass. Um, <laughs> he advocates for the radical overthrow of democracy in favour of a kingdom and a benevolent king. Uh, would that be him? No, no, not him. He's not interested in that. Oh, well, that's good. Um, he constantly abuses people. He writes letters insulting his old uh, university lecturers. I feel like I know this person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat hot dogs. I'm a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I don't have a green hat or a cutlass. I may share some other similarities. <laughs> okay. So, still funny is what I'm getting. Oh, uh, this book is definitely a comedy. Yeah. Um, but it won a Booker Prize. Mm. So, it's not just a comedy. Um, it's, it's a satire of the modern world, and basically it's calling everybody in the modern world an idiot through the eyes of an idiot, who, if you like him, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> um... Uh, this is on my TBR, so I'm interested to see if I do like him because I liked Theo more than you did as well. Mm. I definitely rooted for him more than you did. This anyway. book is slightly fat phobic though, which hopefully doesn't spoil it for yeah, you. Yeah, I probably will. Uh, next is Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. Again, when I have Scarlett O'Hara is not likable. Rhett Butler is not likable. You might spend the whole book rooting for them to get together. But is Rhett... it just so they can be horrible in their own little horrible pit of horrible? Well, look, Rhett Butler is fighting on the side of the Confederacy because they're in the South, and he's making money trading with the North, right? He's an opportunist who doesn't really give a damn who wins the war. Right, now you meant to side with the South because it's in the South, but... Yeah. He basically is like, screw the South, screw the North, 
I'm going to try to make money. Right, so he's a bit of a prick. Right, Scarlett O'Hara um, is just going to use an example that is a spoiler. Scarlett O'Hara is not a nice person. We'll say that. There is many things she does in this book without spoiling it that will um, clearly make you realise that. And then when they get together, they hate each other. And... <laughs> Okay, that sounds satisfying. It's it's kind of like um, Wuthering Heights in that you don't like the main characters and it's a love story, except love story is not quite what Gone with the Wind is. Um, the next one is Brave New World. Um, Brave New World, he, he's a bit of a whingy, whingy face. Uh, he doesn't fit in, where where. Um... And then he does sort of get what he wants, but he's still not satisfied and I, I don't like him. Ultimately though, the commentary of the world around him goes on despite him. And the major debate of the book goes on in front of his face and he doesn't really engage with it. Sort of starts off as a main character and becomes a side character by the end of the book, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, I feel like he's just, he's like a security camera. He like happens to be there catching the action, but he's not really important. Yeah. Which I think is a great um, way to write a book, especially if you're going to centralise someone who represents our shit-ass society in that way. Last book now is Alias Grace. Oh, I loved this. She is the perfect construction of a character. Um, she tells you her own story in such a... Oh, it's the way it would be. It's so accurate and untrustworthy. And do you believe her? Do you not believe her? And she's so charismatic and winning. And, and that makes you trust her less because... That's what, that, I just, it's so real. It's a beautiful, beautiful portrait of someone who you're not quite sure whether they did it or not. Um, and... So this is somebody, you'd be friends with her, but you wouldn't sleep in the same room with her. I don't know if you'd be friends with her. I, I think I'd be too scared of getting stabbed or getting, like, framed for the murder. But equally, you would feel bad for not being friends with her because she might be completely innocent. See what I'm saying? Um... Excellent book, despite the fact that you cannot like the, the main character. In fact, because you cannot like the, the main character. Yeah. Yeah. That's our list. Eight books. Get reading. They're all awesome. They are. It's kind of like this channel. It's awesome, despite the protagonists being unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves me, just because you're a brat. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Thank you for watching. Remember, ideas are powerful. They're more powerful than a charisma. Charisma. Also, subscribe. <laughs> and give us a thumbs up. <laughs>